Hi there, it's Robin here from quiltinginthelock.com. I'm here today to show you how to DI recover a lampshade. Now I have this old lampshade that's in pretty bad shape. I've even taped it where there's, been, there's a hole. And that's okay because that's going to be the undersurface of how I'm going to recover it. There was an accordion folded kind of silky material over top that was literally just disintegrating, very dusty, um, even though I do my housework. Um, and it was disintegrating with time and, and age. And I'm going to go ahead and recover it. So I want to um, let you know that you should have some newsprint or some craft paper or something and a fairly good size on your uh, table. Because I'm today I'm just going to make the pattern for this lampshade. And what I'm going to be doing this week at quiltsocial.com is showing you how to use the Montmartre fabric paint. Um, to add some design to the fabric that I'll be covering the lampshade with. We'll also be using unique clever clips to hold the fabric and some 404 repositionable craft adhesive spray. And I'm using um, Fabric Creations Palette Basics in a cream color so that I can trace my design onto it. I wanted a nice light color so that I could see the design. I'm also using a visual art diary from Montmartre um, to draw out my design and um, some black uh, thread. So you could use polyester. I have Guterman polyester thread here and I have Guterman cotton. And I'm going to decide once I get sewing which one is going to work for me. You'll need scissors, as I said, paper and a pretty good sharp pencil and to get you started. And then I, want, I encourage you to go to quiltsocial.com this week to look at my written tutorial about how to do the, the coloring with the fabric paint, the painting on it. Um, and so how you start is you put your circle, small circle, towards the left. And then I've got my seam down. So the seam that's on the inside of the lampshade that's very obvious is there because whenever they've recovered it before, they've had a seam. And so you're gonna start at that seam and you're gonna work yourself really slowly and holding it. And then you're gonna have to draw on both sides of the edges of the lampshade as you roll and you're going to roll it away from yourself and this will make the master pattern for it so i'm going very slow because i really want to get this accurate and i'm just going to roll until i come around to the seam again and so i'll probably speed up the video so that you can see this but it's kind of boring Let's face it. <laughs> and I'll see you shortly. And up next, I'll show you how I actually add to the pattern to make it work to cover the lampshade. I just want to make note of a couple of different points. I've added three quarter of an inch for cutting fabric as a little note here. So you'll add, have to add about three quarters of an inch of fabric. Okay. You're going to one end, short end, you're going to leave it cut as is. The other end, you're going to have add one inch. And then for cutting fabric on the outside, the biggest, roundest edge, you're going to add three quarters of an inch as well. So three quarters of an inch here, three quarters of an inch here, an inch on one short side, and just cut as is on the other side. I've also um, gone back over it in black marker. And I cut, I drew these edges with a ruler, and I forgot to mention that, but I did draw them with a ruler, okay? And I additioned it a few times just to make sure it was correct before I put the permanent markers to it. But that's my pattern made. As you can see, I have my lampshade cover um, laid down on my table with my pattern. And I have added three quarter of an inch to the, the wide round side and three quarter of an inch to the narrow or smaller round inside. And I've added an inch to one end and nothing to the other. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out now, cut the whole thing out 
and then I'll be back to talk to you. I'm back again and we're at the point where we have finished the pattern and cut out the fabric for the lampshade fabric and um, I wanted to mention that I'm going to be pressing and turning under the inside short circle and the wider circle I'll be pressing it um, to the wrong side both of them it will be one eighth of an inch and then the short end I'll be turning it under a quarter of an inch so I'll just let you know that for the actual upholstery process and in the quiltsocial.com uh, written blog, I'll be talking about Montmartre fabric paints and how I embellish this fabric with that. I'll also um, show you how I work with the Guterman thread and um, how I actually drew, drew out my design in, the visual, in this visual art diary from Montmartre as well. Really, really helpful. Um, but I drew a design out first and I'll be applying that to this fabric and then you'll see in this video tutorial how I actually upholster it to the lampshade, but you will need to refer to www.quiltsocial.com um, to see the written tutorial about how I use the Montmartre fabric paints. And I'm hoping that you'll enjoy the process. So it is a couple of days later after I've completed my design that will be on quiltsocial.com with the method of how I worked with the Montmart paints. Um, so this is the method of how I did this, applied it, and then also how I sewed on top of it is on quiltsocial.com. It's a couple of days later now, and I'm gonna get ready to upholster my uh, lampshade here. And I've got Odif 404 repositionable craft, of, craft adhesive. I've got a window open for fresh air and I have my unique clips and I'm going to get started with the process of spraying the back of the uh, lampshade cover, the new lampshade cover, and uh, we'll get started with it. So I'm just going to spray it. I'm trying, I've got paper down on my table, so I'm not going to get overspray on my table. I'm just giving it a good spray so I, I know it's going to stick. have a bit of a smell so I'm kind of not a real strong smell but a little bit of a smell so I'm kind of glad that I um, decided to have a window open and bring the lampshade over here it's all sprayed and I'm gonna put the raw edge that's not folded under and I realize I've left extra for it to go underneath the bottom of the lampshade and at the top I need to leave about a half an inch at the top and the bottom and so I'm going to do that and I think rolling it on would be the best thing. It is sticking together but it is coming also apart so that's great. And I'm just going to roll it towards myself very slowly and I'm going to check to make sure it's all smooth. Oops, I see that it's not but it's repositionable so I can fix that which is great. it down so that I can get it to go under the finished bottom. I think it's just a really a case of sculpting and manipulating it a little bit to make sure it's all smooth. so far I'm going to use my clever clips as I go to kind of turn it under and hold it on well, this is great these are looking good these are the large ones the 36 cover, uh, clever clips, but they're larger ones, so they work really good over top of the lampshade. I 
and I had drawn a line at the bottom of my design to kind of indicate where I should be so that was help that's helpful as well I probably should pour these out ahead of time if you're going to do it yourself at home and I'm liking how the spray is repositionable and I, I know that the fabric is kind of sticking together but I'm able to pull it apart so that's great and I've never used this before so kind of interesting to see how it works these clips are definitely a godsend if I didn't have them I have to have a second set of hands and I don't have that because I'm doing this at home on my own <laughs> sure it's smooth as I go and having the clips help it keep it down as well which is great finish up here and I'll be back to show you what the finished product looks like so here's our lampshade it's completed and I've just got the clamps and I'm going to leave the clamps on for probably about an hour and then I'm going to put a dab of glue on the inside all around the edge and on the bottom side all around the edge even though like on the fold over fabric even though I've sprayed it I just want to make sure that it's going to stick properly and that there's no kind of wavering and it's nice and um, even and I'm just going to use a craft glue and then also along the folded edge on the back where I we pre-folded it I'm going to put a little dab of glue there just to make sure but it's all nice and smooth really impressed with this Otif spray and these clever clips they seem to be fantastic for this application and I'm going to keep it in my supplies of uh, glue in particular I have a drawer of different types of fabric glues but this is really repositionable, which I'm really impressed with. It does say to shake it well before use and to make sure all surfaces are clean and dry. Spray 404 a distance of eight inches evenly on the back and wait 30 seconds. I didn't do that, but it's still stuck. Um, and peel, press into place firmly. Glue, glued item may be repositioned again and again so that's awesome so that's an awesome spray and these clever clips have worked really well i can see them for many applications including bags and other thicker things that you're working with when you're sewing great project um, all of the technique in terms of adding the fabric paint is on quiltsocial.com so have a look there i hope you enjoyed this video tutorial <music>